Welcome Hornets. We're going to be talking about the falling object problem. Now, in this problem, you are being asked to determine the rate at which an object is falling at a specific moment in time. So they're giving you a situation where you are at the top of a building of some height. You're going to be dropping that object and it will fall like so. And there are two situations that we have to worry about here. Let me just give you the formulas that we're going to work with. In feet, we have the limit as t approaches a for s of a minus s of t over a minus t. Notice that's a slope formula. y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Now, uh, the formula, the equation that we're working with uh, is s of t equals negative 16t squared plus the height in feet. That's going to be referring to the height of this object. In meters, we're using the same formula, but now the formula for the uh, movement is s of t equals minus 4.9 t squared plus the height in meters. So let's take a look and see how this is going to work. We're going to work with feet first, height in feet. And I'm going to give you the equation s of t is equal to negative 16 t squared I'm going to say plus 300. Well, we're going to find our height at uh, time equals, uh, let's go ahead and find at uh, one second and then two, two seconds. So t equals one second and then t equals two. Now we're applying that limit. So we're saying that the limit as t is approaching one for s of one minus s of t divided by 1 minus t. And when we do this, we're going to put our s of t right here and distribute our negative. We're going to put s of 1 right here. And when we put the 1 in, you'll notice that we're subtracting 16 from 300. And that's going to give me 284. So I have my limit. As t approaches 1 for uh, that was 284 minus uh, 300 plus 16t squared all over 1 minus t. Now, when I simplify this, always remember to write your statement down and then simplify. You are going to be left with 16t squared minus 16 over 1 minus t. Now, I can factor out a 16. I can factor down the t, t squared minus 1 into t plus 1, t minus 1, and I can factor out a negative out of the denominator. All of this is our basic algebraic simplification. The limit as t approaches 1 for 16, t minus 1, t plus 1, divided by negative 1 times t minus 1. T minus 1's cancel. Now, when I look at this, I plug my negative 1 in. I have 2. 2 times 16 is 32. And the limit as T approaches 1 is going to end up being negative 32. And this is feet per minute. Uh, feet per second, excuse me. We are talking about an object in seconds. So right here, I have now found the rate at which my object is falling from that building at a height of 300 feet at one second. This is what is referred to as an instantaneous rate of change. It's very different from an average rate of change. An average rate of change is simply a comparison of two points. For example, if I wanted the average rate of change between zero to one, I'm just looking at the slope between 0 and 1 for this function. If I'm working with the other formula, meters per second, everything is going to work the exact same way. So I'm still looking at the limit as t. Let's go ahead and approach 2 this time. That was our second option. We're looking at s of 2 minus s of t divided by, and we're now looking at uh, one, um, 
2 minus t. We're working with s of t is negative 4.9 t squared. Um, and let's go ahead and use 150 meters in height. So I'm going to be a little bit more careful. I now have a decimal. That's one thing about the, uh, the meters. So I'm going to be plugging in my 2. This is negative 4.9 times 4. And I'm getting uh, my negative 19.6. I'm subtracting 150. Make sure I've got that correct. Oh, that's a height of positive 150. There we go. Plus 150. And I now have S of 2 is 130.4. So here we go. The limit. As T approaches 2 for 130.4 minus 150 plus 4.9 t squared all over 2 minus t. Notice that when I multiplied through by my negative for s of t, I moved the 4.9 to the back, and I moved the 150 up to the front, made sure it was negative. We're now going to add these two pieces together. So I'm going to subtract 150, and you'll notice that I end up having the 4.9 moving back into the front, and I have minus... 19.6. Because I already know I'm going to have to, I'm factoring out the negative to have t minus 2. This is the limit as t approaches 2. I'm going to factor out the 4.9. I'm left with 4.9 t squared minus 4 divided by negative 1 t minus 2 for the limit sure you can see this for the limit as t approaches 2. Now we know this is going to reduce. That uh, is t plus 2, t minus 2. It's going to cancel out with the t minus 2. And we're looking at the limit as t is approaching 2 for negative 4.9 t plus 2. I'm going to plug it in. I have 4 times negative 4.9 and I end up with negative 19.6, and this is meters per second. This is what's being asked of you uh, in the questions on page uh, 89, and you're looking at numbers 107, 108, 109, and 110, and you can expect this on an upcoming quiz. Please be aware of that and make sure that you give it a try. Thank you very much. Take care and have a good day.